Hi, this is Derek with Bird's Eye View Media, and today we have a fan theory for you, which we attempted to put a decent amount of research in. Fair warning, for the duration of this video, it is going to have a pretty wide variety of spoilers due to the nature of needing to explain this theory. So if you have not yet watched the movie, you could watch it first and then come back, or you could simply watch this theory and then watch the movie with the theory in mind. So, I recently saw the movie A Cure for Wellness, which, it was a pretty good movie, it had very beautiful cinematography, it had a very interesting story, it had like a contemporary story where the main character goes through something, and then there's a lot of mythology that takes place behind the current events. So, on the surface, it was good. Not great, but certainly good. But something that really improved my experience of watching this movie was this theory that I was working on when, about when I hit the halfway point. So essentially, my theory is that a cure for wellness is a representation of the experience of purgatory. And when I say purgatory, I'm referring to the purgatory that is laid out in the Divine Comedy, the purgatory that Dante and Virgil explore after their trip through Dante's Inferno. We can simply say that the main character, Lockhart, dies in his car crash. So, to start off simply, Mr. Lockhart works for a very large, successful firm where he has gradually been moving up the ranks and has recently published something very successful. However, he has been a little immoral about his methods. Therefore, he's sent on a journey to go to Switzerland to find one of the former board members. He visits the resort, he attempts to see his board member, Mr. Pembroke, but they inform him that visiting hours have ended, and they essentially attempt to stonewall him after he meets with the man who runs the resort, Dr. Vollmer. After this meeting, he gets in a car accompanied with the driver, and he is going to return to his hotel, where he gets into a rather violent car crash. Interestingly enough, we could say that this car crash, rather than him waking up in the resort ready for treatment, we could say that he simply died. We could say that the driver, named Enrico, is present both in reality, which is before the car crash, and in the journey, which is after the car crash. Enrico could represent Virgil. Virgil accompanies Dante in the Divine Comedy through his journey throughout the Inferno and the majority of Purgatory. So Enrico enables our main character, Mr. Lockhart, to get to the gates of purgatory, and he brings him both in reality, and then after death, he brings him to the entrance, the gates of purgatory. So essentially, Mr. Lockhart, his sins are that of selfish ambition. There are different levels of purgatory similar to that of Dante's Inferno, and they function in very much the same way. They level up in accordance with how severe they are. So in this case, our main character would be considered the avaricious. We see this alluded to many times in both the main character, especially when he's on the train and he's being rude to people, he blows people off, and we see him make several statements where it supports that ambition is the most important thing to him. And we also see this in some of his peers. When he first meets the trio of older people who are at the resort, we hear them mention their past sins, the ambition of the, his predecessor, Mr. Pembroke. Obviously, Mr. Pembroke was a very cutthroat businessman. And we also get a mention of a cutthroat venture capitalist, which is revealed to us in banter between the three elderly people. So, the physical manifestation of purgatory in the Divine Comedy is purgatory is a mixture of dark and light, which we can translate to the presence of both the devil and God to influence the direction of the soul. The Divine Comedy in the first canto directly references guilt and how one must suffer the trials of hell to be made clean. 
We could say that this movie certainly matches that description, as Mr. Lockhart is surely going through quite a bit of unpleasant experiences, such as getting his teeth drilled, amongst many, many other instances. So it's fair to say that he is certainly suffering trials of guilt. Purgatory is imagined as a mountain rising. The base of the mountain is the anti-purgatorio, then comes a gate, and then purgatory itself begins. The movie follows this to a T. The resort is essentially a castle which is located on top of a mountain, and of course there is a gate that Enrico, or Virgil, drives the main character directly to. There is also a very important character in the Divine Comedy named Beatrice. Beatrice takes over as a guide from Virgil and takes Dante to the Paradiso. Beatrice could surely be represented by Hannah. Hannah is a very pure character. We see her very, she's much different than everybody else there. She's always separated from the patients. She's separated from the staff. She's doing her own thing. She's typically wearing white. She's typically very pure, very happy. And we allude to this many different times throughout the movie. So it would make sense for her to be Beatrice, the one who takes our main character, Mr. Lockhart, through the gates of purgatory into heaven. In the Divine Comedy, the angels guard the ascent. The angels, contrary to what you might think, could actually be the staff. Now, even though the staff seems very aligned with the doctor, the staff, however, seems to care about their patients. We see them certainly mistreat their patients at times, but overall they are working to guide their patients through this experience. So the staff are guarding the ascent. The staff make it more difficult for these patients to progress and to purify, to go to heaven. They cause this punishment to purify the soul. The doctor, Dr. Vollmer, is the depiction of suffering personified. He is the manifestation of the final trial. He is the presence of the devil. He is the presence of suffering. He is the driving force behind everything that happens to Lockhart. In the Divine Comedy, the devil appears as a serpent and is quickly driven away by the angels. However, Lockhart's sin has been so great and he is so resistant to the process of purgatory that the doctor is able to gain strength and he is able to kind of formulate the staff around him without being cast out of purgatory. So the doctor is essentially the one creating these horrific events for our main character. The patients seem to side with the doctor at one point because they have begun to succumb to his influence, to their sin. It's not so much as them giving into their sin as you would see in Inferno, but it is them becoming complacent. They're not paying their dues. They're not satisfying their guilt. They are happy to be stagnant, complacent in purgatory. And that leads them to come to this almost cult-like mindset. So at one point, we see Mr. Lockhart leave purgatory. And you might think that this breaks the immersion of purgatory, but that is not true because in the Divine Comedy, it is very possible for the souls to leave purgatory. They cannot enter the Paradiso until they have paid for it, but they can leave that dimension. The town people are a representation of what must be left behind. The town people and the town itself represent simple pleasures, such as music and beer. And it also has negative influences from his life, such as his boss and his board members. Another interesting aspect that supports this theory is that no one may go upward after sundown. That is called the Law of Ascent, and it is found in the seventh canto, and it is alluded to multiple times with visiting hours. We see Mr. Lockhart violate these visiting hours, and we also see a future patient violate these visiting hours, and that leads them directly to much more punishment, because they are going against purgatory. They're going against the way that one must appease this guilt. No one may ascend 
after sundown. So this law of ascent is directly related to visiting hours, which coincidentally do seem to fall right around sundown. We have Mrs. Watkins, who is creating a puzzle which is depicting the process of purgatory. We have most people in purgatory are elderly, which would make sense because many who pass away do traditionally happen to be older. We have Mr. Lockhart, who got in a horrific car crash and then suddenly awakens back in this odd place, which is representative of purgatory. We have the doctor who is driving suffering, who is behind everything that is going wrong, representing the presence of suffering and the devil. We have the staff who guard the ascent and provide trials, representing the angels. And we have Hannah, who is representing Beatrice, the one who guides him out of purgatory into the paradiso, the purest form, the element of love present in purgatory. So these aspects are very consistent with the story of the Divine Comedy. Now you might be asking yourself, what about this whole mythology of the Baron? Well, the Baron, I believe, is representative of the process of purgatory farther. It is kind of aligned with Mrs. Watkins' puzzle. It is showing you the process of purgatory. People in the past who have overcome the devil, they represent unity and compassion. This is shown in their act of burning the barren, burning everything down. That is unity and compassion. They feel for the other people who have gone through suffering the process of purgatory. The story of the Baron is a metaphor of an avaricious man taking advantage of others and abusing his powers. He experimented on these peasants also he could increase the fertility of his family. He is ultimately consumed by fire, a depiction of going to the inferno. The serpent arrives in Purgatorio and is driven away by angels. The angels outweigh the devil when Dante visits Purgatory in the Divine Comedy. This is reversed for our main character, where the doctor, representing the devil, has yet to be driven away in the eighth canto. The fifth cornice in Canto 19 features the hoarders and wasters who lie motionless. We see many patients towards the end of the film lying motionless, suspended in water, completely vacant from their body depiction. This is very consistent with another level of purgatory, those who have sinned in a different way, who are seen in passing by our main character. The vitamin vials could represent the waters of Leth. They are a final step in the soul's purification. When suffering has occurred and guilt has been appeased, then you drink these waters and you forget your sin right before you ascend to paradise. And finally, one of the most grim parallels that I could find for this theory is Hannah is taken and tied to a bed and the doctor prepares to rape her. Now, this is in consistency with the mythological story that underlies the movie, but it's also parallel to what happened when Beatrice is taken and violated by Lucifer right in front of Dante. That is a direct parallel. The final parallel are the eels. We see eels present in all of the water throughout the film. We see them surrounding main characters such as Hannah and Mr. Lockhart. And more the psychological meaning behind eels, more than a snake or a fish, the eel represents slippery temptation. It represents intrigues which threaten us. So this is a direct manifestation to Mr. Lockhart's ambition. His avaricious tendency is symbolized with the presence of the eels. The water that the eels are in directly represents the situation. Clear flowing water is the spirit of life can change, whereas muddy and murky water means that you want to be slick and you want to ease through threatening situations. So if you pay close attention to the movie and when the eels emerge, 
They emerge in very different contexts. When our main character is suspended in the tank, the water is clear. He's beginning to give himself to the process of purgatory. So the eels and the clear water are representing that progression. However, when he's very against the situation, when he's in his room and he looks in the tank of his toilet, or when he looks in the pond, then we see muddy and murky water. That's when he's trying to be slick, when he's trying to outweigh the process of purgatory. So that's my theory. The theory really does have quite a few parallels between Dante's Purgatorio and simply what the story says. So I'd like to know what you guys think. I'd like to know if I missed any major parts of the story. Did you find the theory interesting? And could this improve your enjoyment of the movie? Thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing if you like these types of videos.